and in its own time, in its own way, the mist will clear, maybe slowly at first, but then allow yourself to go to this strong memory in its own time, its own way, just allow it to happen and set the intention for it to happen. Just let me know when that happens for you. Seems to be seeing a, a view of um, a river with a bridge over it. Wonderful. Just describe this. It's, um, stone bridge, just one arch, um, with some buildings like uh, not a city but um, a town, not a big town low buildings, like, I'm not sure what they're made of, whether they're brick or wood, and I'm, I'm on the riverbank looking towards this sort of, um, this town. Sounds good. And just let me know that you're comfortable here, looking across over that. Just let me know. Yeah, yeah. That's good. You know, just to be aware of the ground surrounding you as you're looking across at that view and just be aware of your arms and your legs. So you can describe or sense to me how you're dressed and just let me know that how you feel you're dressed right now. Well, this, um, I feel that um, I'm wearing a sort of um, a one-piece um, uh, dress or tunic, um, which has buttons all the way down. Um, and it has sleeves, but not long sleeves, quite short sleeves. Um, I'm not sure what. Um, so it's like a uh, uh, sort of gr light green colour or mid green colour. Like, um, I'm trying to think of the sort of fabric, um, sort of like, uh, I want to say wool, but more like hessian. Sounds good. It's not, yeah, it's, um, yeah, I, I can't, I don't know what kind of dress it is, I don't know what kind of tunic it is, just, just seems to go down to my knees at least. That's good. How old do you feel you are right now in this memory? I feel as if I'm quite young, maybe in my twenties. That's good. Very good. Well next count of three when I click my fingers, the name of what they call you in this lifetime comes to you. One, two, three. What do they call you in this lifetime? It's something like... The first name that came to me was Ethel. Bethel was Ethel. that? Ethel, I don't Ethel. know if that's right. Ethel, it sounded like, it seems like. Ethel or, either Ethel or 
Eldridge, so word it, I don't know if that's my first name or... Um, it could be both names, it could be a first and second name. Very good. Just a light to go with Ethel, and if mm. you feel you wish to add to that, mm. just let me know. No. Well, as you're here looking across, just let me know where in the world you feel you are. Just let me know where in the world you feel you are. No. I feel it's mid, mid Europe, Europe somewhere. Um, some. Somewhere like, I feel it's mid Europe. Um, I feel it's, I feel it's Germany or Austria. It's, the landscape is not, not mountainous though. It, it's, it's a farming landscape. Mm -hmm. It's not um, not mountains or some, um, you know mainly a farming area but but with this town and this bridge in front of me so it's got roads it's um it's um could be um could be a, a, a small town you know with not far from a big 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 bigger bigger city I, that's what the feeling i get very good and this town with this bigger city the way you are right now do you feel like you're warm enough in this this moment right now? Yes, I feel as if I've been somewhere and I'm coming back to this town. Very I, good. I feel it's where I live. Lovely. Now see if a name comes a bit later, but first of all, the year of what year it is, that comes to you on the count of three, one, two, three. What year is it? A year did come to me, but it's a year that came to me was 13, 14. That's good. It seems what? a bit, I, I don't know, that's what came to me. We'll go for it for now, but you know when you're having these regressions that sometimes it becomes clearer as you move on. Now, staying with this lifetime, I want you to move further forward, further forward, just a little bit in time. You said you were just coming home. On the count of three, I want you to go to the place where you live, where you rest your head at night, where you call home. Allow yourself, if you haven't already, to go to that space on the count of three, one, two, three. And describe to me the place where you live. I feel that it's, um, It's a bit, it's a bit as if it's the entrance to a church, but it's not a church. So it's, I get the feeling it's, um, it is ecclesiastical though. So I think, um, I think it's, um, I think it might be a convent. That's the feeling I got as well from when I was looking at the village. Um, because I could see a tower, a sort of flat top, flat roof tower, which seemed to have a belfry in it. So I thought that was where I was heading for. So I think this is where I, where I live. Wonderful. I don't know whether I'm somebody who, whether I work here or whether I'm actually, um, A nun that lives here. Wonderful. Mm. And whilst you're here, and you just allow yourself to relax into this memory of yours, 
just want you to now allow yourself to have a clearer understanding of what you what you do how you spend your days and that comes to you now how do you spend your days I'm seeing myself in the um, the kitchen of this place, and I think I spend my days working here, fetching um. I think that's where I just come back from is um the market, so I come back with food. So this is what I do here. I'm um, like a servant. Very good. How does it feel to be working in this place? Um, yeah, I, I, I'm comfortable here. I'm, um, I feel that I've been here since I was um, a young girl. That's good. And whilst you're here in this space now, wouldn't you just be able to find somewhere in this place it may even be water but a time around this time if you be in your 20s where you're able to look at yourself in a reflection so you can see how you look and describe yourself allow that to happen on the count of three one two three a time when you're looking at yourself in the reflection so you can see how you look within this lifetime. Let me know what you see in this sense. Okay, I see myself in um a window that has got several panes of glass in it so I can see myself in it. And I'm I'm wearing, um, I've got light brown hair which is long so I can see it coming here but but I'm wearing a sort of white bonnet just not an elaborate bonnet just a round bonnet with I can't it's more like a cap than a bonnet um, and the dress that I could see it is like a like a it just go down almost, almost to my feet that's what I couldn't make out when I was earlier on but I can see now and it's a plain, very plain but with the buttons down the front and yeah and the reason the sleeves are short is because of the work I do. Makes sense. Sort of cooking and making bread and stuff and um, carrying water and quite, um, it's hard work, you know? Yes, I can imagine. But it's, it's what I'm used to. No. Staying with this lifetime, the idea and understanding of who you work for, exactly who you work for. It is Come. the it is the um, the cathedral in the city, and we are. This is the convent that is attached to it. You know, so I'm serv I'm a servant to the nuns. Very good. Now on the next count of three, the name of this cathedral comes to you. One, oh two, three doesn't come just to see if it does come just relax and if it comes it doesn't matter I don't know if this is real but I want to say Utrecht that's okay we'll go with it if you don't know it's fine to say that as well just I don't even that. know where that is <laughs> okay <laughs> or you can look it up just describe now what you're aware of at this moment in time, just describe a little more what you can see wherever you are right now. I'm at 
I'm standing at the door of the kitchen, which is... It's a big wooden table where we chop the cook on, and it's, it's more of an open fire, not a stove, but it's more of an open fire, like, um, which you hang cauldrons over. Um, and there's a, I'm looking out to a garden, which is where the well is, and um, there's vegetables, and there's her garden, and this is all part of what I look after. Sounds good. Um, there's nobody about at the moment because I don't think I'm the only servant, but other people are busy doing their own things, you know? Yes. Yeah, I know. I think... But it's a very nice... I mean, it's a nice place to live. It's like... There are people living in far worse places, you know? Of course. No. Around this time, if there was a time when you were looking just outside the cathedral, so you can describe how it looks to me, just allow yourself to go to that time now, one, two, three, staying with that lifetime, the time when you saw the cathedral. Just describe to me what you can see. <sighs> No idea if this is real, but I, I, I'm seeing, I'm seeing a, a, a square, mostly cold square, and I'm seeing a, a cathedral, not not a massive, but with two spires, two quite big spires, and an, a big arched doorway, um, and the um, houses round about. Or, um, yeah, timber frame houses. Quite. Sounds very it's not, I mean, I, you know, it, I wouldn't live in houses like this because they're, <laughs> mm -hmm. they're for rich people, you know. <laughs> yeah. Sounds nice to be there just to um, see it. I would, I only come here when I've, I'm on an errand, you know? Yes. Now, staying with this same lifetime, I just want you to move to a time when you uh, had a pleasant memory or felt contentment, just a really happy, pleasant memory within this lifetime. Allow that to come to you now, that very contented, happy memory. Tell me about that. I mean, um, I mean, like, uh, in the actual church, and um, not the cathedral, the church, which the convent is attached to, and um, and this is, and I'm meeting, I've met the um, the woman who's in charge. I suppose she's the. Um, I want to say the mother, the mother, the, the head, the mother who is in charge of the nuns, the mother nun. I don't know what, mm. how you say it. Um, and I've met her for the first time. And she says I can work here. And I'm quite young. And I'm really happy that she said that I can work there. Because it's um, it's a safe place to work. Safe. Uh, it means that I'm going to have a safe life. Not like some of the boys and girls I grew up with. Glad you're going to have a safe life. Describe her to me. How how she, does she look? Uh, so she wears white. And she's, yeah, she wears white, and she's got a very, very kind face. I don't think she's, um, I don't think she's very old. I think she's in her about 50 or 50, something like that age. And she's, 
she's she's like a she is like a mother. I mean, she is like a mother, as if I the mother I would like to have, you know. Um, I just feel that uh, I'm so glad I've met her. That's nice. And the, the sun is coming down into this room, um, which is. I can see the the altar and the chairs that people sit on. Sounds good. Sounds nice with the sun coming in. Just describe this area, this space where you are right now, just a little more. It is quite. Um, it's not a big church. It's um. It's a stone built church. Um, just some wooden wooden pews around the walls. Um, no, no stained glass or anything like that, just... Uh, just wood and stone. And you're young at this time, mm. how old are you now? Meeting the, meeting the mother. Yeah, how old do you I'm, feel you I'm, are I'm now? Fif I'm about 15, 14 or 15. Do you remember much about your life before then? I feel that um, I feel that I have. I come from a family that is um. Several children. Um, I'm not the oldest, but I feel that um, I'm the oldest still living. Uh, I feel that um, I feel that my mother's still alive. Uh, she's. Um, I feel that, uh, that she's always had this in mind for me, you know, she's wanted me to, um, this is the life she's wanted for me because um, I have a feeling to, um, because she knows it will be a safe life for me. That's nice. And I'm glad that she knows that it'll be a safe life for you. Describe your mother to me. How does she look? I feel that she's um, very careworn. Um, she's had many children. And they haven't all lived. Sorry I spent to hear that. my childhood helping her look after the younger ones. Um, she, um, I feel that she, um, I, I don't feel that. I don't feel that I really knew my father in this life. I feel that um, he was not on the scene from early, early, you know, whether he, I can't, don't know whether he died or whether he's just gone. Um, and she's struggled, you know. And so she's some, but she makes her living all bits and pieces. She she has a little bit of a her own little like a little bit of a homestead but not very much, do you know what I mean? She sells the fruit and the vegetables yes. and not 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 she just kind of tries to get just enough. And so 
she feels that so me, me, this, this, me living in the convent will help her, help her out, you see, because I will be able to get extra food and stuff for them. I'm glad. That's what, that's what I feel. That's why I feel I'm here. Before you moved to the convent, how close or far away were you from this, the convent? Yes, close, in the farmlands, nearby. Good. Now, staying with this same lifetime, see if we can get your mother's name. Whatever comes to you, one, two, three. What's your mother's name? Well, I think it's Frida. Frida, very good. Just see now if we can get your family name. What you feel family name is one, two, three. What family name are you getting? I'm not I'm not sure. It, yes. I heard a name came to me before which was like something like Eldridge. But I don't know. That's okay. Just allow yourself to relax and it may come out in a little more detail later. Now, staying with this lifetime, just the understanding and whatever you wish to take on from this, you will take on. But just, just let me know at this age if you feel your what happened to your father and why he's not really about. The knowledge comes to you. One, two, three. Do you feel your father wasn't about in your young childhood? I feel that he had to, um, I feel that he had to leave us for something like either a war or he had to, uh, he, um, he was contracted, he had to leave us um, for a purpose like that, whether it was a war or connected with a war, I feel it was something like that. Okay. And he never came back. I am sorry to hear that. Do you have any memories of him from this lifetime? I don't think I do. Okay. Except that I feel that I have younger brothers and I, my mother say that they look like him, so <laughs> but that's all I that's all I think all I can think of now staying with this lifetime we'll move further forward in time further forward in this lifetime again to you being at the age of 30 allow that to happen one, two, three. Thirty 30 years old let me know what you're doing now I'm actually visiting my mother's um, farm. Um, I'm actually um, I'm actually sitting in the orchard with um, one of my younger. I think it's my younger sister, and uh, we are we're just talking. <laughs> uh, it's nice to uh, be, be visiting them. That's nice. Tell me about your younger sister and how she looks. She has some redder hair than me, more like auburn, curlier than mine. <laughs> she's um, she's only about she's about five years younger than me. Yeah. Get the feeling that she's um she's married. I think to somebody in the lives in a guy that lives in the town. I can't think. 
Just relax and allow mm. it to happen. But she's pleased to see me because they don't see me often. That's nice. And now, stay with this lifetime. Let's see if we can get your sister's name. Just relax and see what comes up. One, two, three. Do you feel your sister's name is? I want I want to see Ruth. That's okay. And if these names come or don't come, just allow them and just give a little bit of time for them to come. Just relax into it. If you don't know, it's always fine to say you don't know. You said you're in an orchard. Just describe this orchard a little more to me, please. It's an apple orchard. Not big, just attached to my mother's farmhouse. Um, it's just, uh, there's a, another field. There's a horse over there. Um, this is where I grew up. When you say it's a farm, do you it's feel a that? Small farm. Do you feel that it's an animal farm, or do you feel you they keep animals at it's this farm? It's just tiny. It's just uh, enough for one family. Uh, just anything that we could grow, you know. Vegetables, herbs, the apple orchard, horse. The horse. Uh, we used, we can hire out people and stuff and people can graze their sheep and goats on our field. It's share things like that with other neighbours. Lovely. It seems I'm ha it's a happy life, but it's it's a hard life. I understand that. But we're sort of grateful. We're grateful because we what we have managed to. We know that lots of people are have it much worse. And your work at the convent. Do you feel you do the same things, or do you feel your duties have changed at all? No, I feel that I, I'm still there and I feel that I, um, I feel that I train, uh, I train younger girls that the nuns bring in sometimes to help. Good. Just allow, no self to move further forward to one of those times where you're training the younger girls just allow yourself to go to that now one of the times when you're training the younger girls just let me know what you can see or sense now at this moment showing this girl how to um, how to make dough and um, form, the, form the bread on the table And how's she doing? Yeah, she's enjoying it, but I think she's a bit of a brat, you know. <laughs> I think I have to keep keep telling her to 
pay attention and not her <laughs> mind wanders, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. So we stay with this lifetime and just move further forward a little bit in time, further forward, staying with this lifetime. To you being at the age of 40, that happens now, 40 years old. If you can tell me about your 40th year. Yeah. I feel like I'm moving about a lot slower. Okay. I feel, um, I feel like I'm still there. I feel it's um. I feel as if it's um the, the winter somehow. I feel um that I feel that doing the work I have to do is harder, a lot harder for me. Um uh, lots of aches and pains, you know. Um but I feel that the nuns do help me. That's good. They, they respect me. Uh, I've been there most of my life so far, you know. How long have you been experiencing these aches and pains? Uh, yeah, um, a few years now. I think it's just because of all the work I do. must be very tiring. And at this moment, at the age of 40, is there anything, or in your 40s, is there anything your higher self wishes to ask you or find out from this lifetime at this moment? This life is, is very important because to me, and um, it, it's a life, <laughs> it's a life that other people might look down on. And how does it feel to you, this but life? It, whenever I felt that I was missing things, like missing out on, like not being married or not, not going to school really, or, it, I was always happy that I was able to help my family out by doing what I do. And and serve, serving serving the convent. Very nice. And it because it was a life of it's a life of duty. Indeed. Staying with this lifetime, we'll just move further forward in time, further forward to your 50s, one, two, three, staying in that lifetime, your 50s. Tell me about that. I 
don't feel that I'm um, don't feel that I'm really doing very much now. I feel that I'm um, quite uh I feel like an old woman when I'm not a really old woman. Um, yeah. Uh, so I'm not, I don't feel that I'm doing, I do the, anything like what I used to. Uh, have people But I'm still living there. I feel a bit... I feel like I've... Um I lost touch with my family, I feel. My mother died and I feel that I don't see them much, hardly at all now. I feel that I live mostly within the convent. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. But I, I'm not unhappy, you know. Just feel that I... I, I do less and less. Um, not unhappy though. Uh, still, still, sort of do what I can there. I understand. I, I want to say that I don't. As if I don't, as if I have periods of time where I don't really take part, where I don't, <laughs> where I don't, uh, and you know, somebody has to say me and then I then I can come back you know I yeah I, so I think I sit around a lot <laughs> how do you keep yourself amused and occupied during the moments of sitting down just watching the garden watching other people work in the gardens um, uh, yeah, I, feel, I hear the, the bells that call the nuns to prayer. I've been hearing these bells all my life, you know. So I know them, even though I don't... I'm not a nun myself, but I, I know all the times of their day and what they do and... I still feel part of it, you know, but yes. I kind of feel that I, I kind of have, it comes and goes. Indeed. Staying with this lifetime will move forward to see what the year of your age 60 brings one two three in your 60s what are you aware of now i just feel a bit uh, nothing i feel as if i'm floating Okay. No. 
staying with this life experience you're experiencing, knowing that it can be like a videotape that could be fast forward or rewound, you're able to experience only what emotions you're comfortable and happy to experience. I'm going to go to your very last year of living within this lifetime. One, two, three. Your very last year of living in this lifetime. Tell me about that. Where of now? I'm sure that I have. I feel that I am um, maybe not exactly went blind, but was not able to see very much, and so had to be guided around stuff so that I was, I think, so I was really quite. They were looking after me, do you know what I mean? Um, yes. As years ago, I was looking after them. Um, and I'm not that old, but I'm not capable. So, because I'm looking around me and it's, I know, I know that I'm still in, uh, they sit me on a bench. I know that I'm in the garden. I can feel the sun on my face, but I, I don't feel that I, I don't always know what's going on. How long do you feel your eyesight has been giving you trouble? I know now why I'm looking at this life. <sighs> but, yes, it, 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 it came on, it came on, um, I don't know whether it came on. Uh, because of illness, but I know, I know the work wore me down and I gradually, I think this is my mind, that I lost the ability to remember and concentrate. I am sorry to hear that. So that I was not able to do the, all the work anymore. That's why, uh, yeah, I sort of, but, but they treated me very kindly. If it's appropriate, you can take that kindness through to you in other lives, through with you to other lives. Again, just emphasizing what you experience would be like a videotape that could be fast forwarded or rewound if you wish to. So we need to go to your very last 10 seconds of living in this lifetime. Allow yourself to go to that last 10 seconds now. One, two, three. It's your final 10 seconds. And just let me know what you're aware of in these last 10 seconds. Shortness of breath. Uh, weak, weak. I feel as if I'm lying down. Uh, I smell. I can smell candle wax.
Now as I count backwards from three to zero, see will be your moment of passing. Three, two, one, and zero, you've just passed over now. And as you've just passed over, just let me know what awarenesses you have now in this moment. I can feel the candle, the warmth of the candle flame. And if there's such a thing as time in this life between lives, just let me know as you slowly move forward now from this moment, what else you're sensing and experiencing. I'm kind of, I'm kind of aware of the room I'm in. And the, people, whether a nun or a couple of people who helped, who, st st who waited, who stood over me, you know, who waited, sat by me, prayed, prayed over me while I was, and I can still see, just, I can see it, which I haven't been able to see, <laughs> mm -hmm. I haven't been able to see for a long time, and, and now I can, as if I'm above, I'm looking down at the room. I can, and I, I'm looking down, and they are, they are, they are sat beside the bed. I am feeling gratefulness, thankfulness for them, for them. That's good. I can actually see. I can actually see myself lying in the bed. And in this space of this life between lives now, would he had a message from your higher self, but just to, as you review the life you've just had, is there any other understanding or uh, another message from your higher self that you feel your higher self would like to give you in this moment? Yes. Yes, I think it... I think it's something I... Being soft, selflessness is a. It's a good thing. It's not. You should never resent it. You should never. Um, you should always. You should not resent it. You should not feel hard done by. Uh, because it's a good thing. That's nice. Because I was rewarded in this life. I. I might not have known it or thought it much, but I was rewarded because other people looked after me when I thought <laughs> I thought I was being like a servant all the time very good I can't I just sort of a uh, just Miss now. No. Do you feel you require any healing, either physically or emotionally, from this life experience you've just had? I think that was the healing. Very good. Before I bring you round from this nice relaxed states just allow the understanding and healing that you've had just go deeper deeper into your subconscious mind deeper throughout your whole system
and then you can just allow it to go a little deeper still and one more time deeper and just the understanding and experience of that healing as I am quiet for just a very short while good. And the next count of three you'll be back in that corridor which looked like a hospital corridor where you started your experience from. And when you're back in that corridor I'd just like you to know that the door to this past life is closed for the time being but can be reopened whenever you want to reopen the door again or any other doors at some point when it's right or if it's right for you. But just allow yourself to go back to that corridor where you started from now. One, two, three. Back in that corridor now. And the doors are closed for the time being. Just let me know that you're there. Yeah. Very good. In a moment I'm going to awaken you from this nice deep relaxed state going to count up from one to three and on three and only three your eyes will be open you'll be refreshed alert calm and confident remembering everything about this session with crystal clear clarity and reinforcing every single positive thought you've ever had about yourself all right now one becoming aware now of your hands resting comfortably two small movements now in your body signaling that be soon time to waken on three eyes open alert refreshed and ready for the rest of your day you still filming yes i'm still filming i can <laughs> keep it running if you like or i, I could take no i don't mind i just That was like, I couldn't believe, because you weren't suggesting any of that. You were not suggesting any of it. Mm -hmm. And it was as if I... Well, you suggested the corridor, mm. and you suggested your happy place, mm. or your good place, your comfortable place, which is somewhere I go quite regularly, so that was like easy, if you mm. like. And the corridor was like... has a lot of meaning for me. Mm -hmm. a hospital corridor so that was kind of easy to visualize as well so you were guiding me in that way mm -hmm. but you weren't guiding me anything about what I was going to visualize or see so I just it's almost as if I it's the sort of life I would I wouldn't say wish for everybody but the sort of life I wish in the sense that it was a life without trauma mm -hmm. where I got the strong impression that the, ab the father who was gone had maybe died by violence mm -hmm. and that the younger children had died of illnesses or, or, or were, were not or died in childbirth or, or were not going to have happy lives or, or went off to do lives where they didn't have happy lives. Whether and so that my life, in contrast, although I was a servant, was a, was a happy life, you know, it was a contented life. Yeah. But I probably felt as a child, you know, because it started, I envisaged it at first when I was about 15. Mm. And at that age, who wants to go and live in a convent? Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it was like, <laughs> so I know that I felt resentment in that life for being a servant as well. But, yeah. but I knew that it was duty. And, I, and that word duty came to me, that it's a life of duty. And I didn't have any, 
I, nothing came to me of any, any wider kind of... I didn't yeah. feel that my family was especially religious or anything. No. I felt that it was one of those things that you did, that you yeah. sent... Like a boy might be sent to the army and a girl might be sent to the convent. It was yeah. just one of those things that what came was a way of looking after their children. That was a route, that was a yeah. way that they could protect a child. It right? seemed like rather than a vocation you wanted, it was more it, uh, to, to, for the family, you know, to help yeah, money. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, yes, at that age that would be how I would, that, how I kind of explained it to myself. Yeah. I'm here, I'm a servant and I'm... I'm resenting it, you know, here's my sister having a more enjoyable life, yeah. married mm -hmm. and with having her children and stuff. Mm. Because although I didn't say it to you, I, I got the impression that her children were playing further away oh, okay. in the field and that's where I was chatting to her. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I kind of, <laughs> I kind of probably had the feeling that all the way, oh yeah, uh, that I actually resented being a kind of servant, yeah. but... But at the same time, I knew that it was essential to do. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. from the point of view of the the church, it was essential that they had servants. Do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. it was like, had it was fulfilling a role in, mm. in a society. Now, whether I made it all up, mm. whether it was a life that I, or whether it, it was a real life I had, and it has so much relevance to my life today, it's almost unbelievable. Mm. So that's where it, and that's where I feel where I've watched your mm. regressions with other people. Yeah. That we might be using this to heal ourselves. Yeah. Because we're all searching for an explanation of why does this happen to me? Yes. Why have yeah. I got that illness? Why is this happening to me at this age? Oh, this isn't fair. <laughs> why mm. is this? <laughs> Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. And that life that I envisage, and I'm going to say envisage because mm. I don't know where to... Mm. The, the, the names and things that came to me were just out of the blue. Mm. Yeah. I couldn't point you where Utrecht is on a map. No. I don't even know. I don't even know what country it's in. Yeah, it'd be I interesting got, to have a look I got anyway. the strong impression that it was mid-European. Yeah. And that's all I could think of. And then I, and the name Utrecht came to me and, and the names of the people, and I have no idea whether those are mid-European names or what. They just came to me. So they, they did come out of the blue. Whenever you said, think of something, it came. Yes. But yeah. I don't know whether it was real or not, you know? <laughs> so, but it seemed real. Yeah. It seemed like a real, it seemed like a, a life that I've, that I would have wanted for myself in this life almost. Mm. If there was a society like that. Yeah. It did seem very caring at the I, end a, because that came across. A life where you had, you toil all the way through yes but that it had a purpose because you were supporting other people yeah indeed and <laughs> so you were giving up a lot of stuff that you could have had yourself mm. um yeah which you can just imagine any any girl at the age of 15 who would want to do you know what i mean yeah <laughs> but, yeah, yeah but Imagine today, if you said to a 15-year-old today, are oh, you going to live in a convent for the rest of your life? Yeah, you know, no you way. <laughs> do, you know, do you understand what I mean? Yeah. And then I, I did have a feeling that 40s and 50s is quite young to be like becoming really mm. disabled, but I felt that it was either something to do with all the hard work mm. that I'd become disabled, or but I had a feeling that I had a feeling that um, it was mental yeah. illness. Yeah. That I wasn't able to, that I had long periods of time where I just sat mm -hmm. gazing in space and didn't really know what was going on. I just mm. understand what I mean, but I knew I was still there. Yeah. <laughs> so, it, and it was like, when that happened to me, other people had to look after me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And even if I didn't particularly know, and then you, I really had a strong, when you asked me to, oh, when you're passing over, that I, after a long time of not being able to see properly or mm. not um, drifting in and out of seeing that i i could actually see yeah, yeah the deathbed scene yes yeah and that was <laughs> <laughs> that was really um yeah who knows i mean maybe that is what happens mm. or maybe that is what i mean is it was like 
uh, let, let me put it another way, which sounds really weird, that when we are suffering from illnesses and things, we're not really suffering from illnesses and things. Mm. That the, the illnesses and disabilities are, I'm not going to say something we've bought on ourselves, but something that are there for a purpose. Yeah, makes sense to me. That You understand what I mean? Yeah. Um, and if I really did have a life like that, oh, life well. taught me that it really is a lesson that you could mm -hmm. <laughs> you could carry forward because you think how many people we know in our lives who just spend their whole lives complaining. Yeah, I know a few about <laughs> about you know, oh why is so and so? Why is my relative got this and I haven't? Or why are they rich and I'm not? And do you know what I mean? And and I've always had a strong feeling in this life that really, <laughs> do you know what I mean? We only really need the simple things in life. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like shelter, food, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> water, you know, um, companionship, that's it really. What yeah. else actually do you need to be happy? So yeah. I've always had that strong feeling in this life. Yes, absolutely. So that makes me wonder, you know, is that life I've just envisaged, was it real or was it something that was part of my own healing mm. process? Yeah. Um, but whatever it was, if there was such places, if there was such society it might have seemed harsh to the mm. people living in it yeah because after all they didn't have any of the comforts we have today and they didn't have any of the and it was all just toil mm. from m morning till night basically but but on the other hand it was a, a human society which is like we're lacking a lot of that today aren't we oh i totally so agree i just that. wonder i just wonder whether it, it is possible that you take this through from one night to another and maybe maybe it's an ideal that I've got that I can't always live up to that what I envisaged mm. do you understand what yeah. I mean um but I also had the strong feeling that I I quite resented it a lot of the time yeah as well <laughs> funny enough <laughs> one of your happy moments was seeing the, the, the lady when you first went to the convent and said she was smiling you said the sun's coming through it was, you quite happy yeah it was because I did have a mother mm. in that life, but the mother I had was so ground down by mm. toil and having so many children that it was almost that she probably didn't have a lot mm. to give to her children. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? So that when totally. I met this woman, in this, this, I, I wanted to say Mother Superior, but I wasn't sure whether that was what they would call them at the time. Mm. But she seemed like a second mother to me. Mm. That was yeah. the feeling. So obviously that made me happy, you know, because at that age, you know, so... Yeah, exactly. um, that would be amazing. And I do know, historically, that convents were mm -hmm. places of safety. Indeed, yeah. Where people did sometimes live mm. to escape from things that were going on. Yeah. So that's possibly, if I did have a life like that, that was lucky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, lucky period of time. Absolutely, because you know? although it was hard and that, it, it, it seemed like there were quite a few of Compensations. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but uh, you wouldn't have known that they were compensations at the time mm. because everybody kind of lived like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's not like today where you can, even somebody living in a really poor village in somewhere like Africa can see on the internet mm. how rich people live totally. in America. It wasn't like that in, yeah. in days gone by. Nobody knew how the people lived elsewhere really, no. did they? Unless they yeah. were educated. And, but people who just lived kind of peasant lives wouldn't have known I mean, people didn't travel like they did now. It was just basically your your bubble. Well, that that's was how it. I felt. I yeah. felt that the only time I'd been to the city and seen the cathedrals, if mm -hmm. I was on an errand, yeah, that was mm -hmm. the only time I would ever have gone there. Like you mm -hmm. know, that's. What, <laughs> mm. I didn't feel that we were religious particularly. Mm. No, so it didn't cross as being really whether religious. Whether it was a time when, whether it was a time of where there was a lot of religious turmoil going on, possibly. Don't know. I don't know, but yeah. certainly I didn't feel that. I'd grown up in a family that was religious, mm. but I would have said probably observant rather than religious. You know, you, mm. you had to go to church and you had to do that probably. Oh, you've than, been talking about rather it in the, than it forever, wouldn't you? In the village, you would have been like ousted if you didn't go to yes, church. Yes, it was probably it was probably just what you had to do, it, yeah. rather than you know something you thought about all the time. I mean, mm. um, it's probably just like today. Mm. There's a lot of people who, who are ultra-religious and think about it all the time and pray all the time and other people who just 
just go to church for weddings and funerals and baptisms, yeah. isn't it? You exactly. Know? Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's probably never changed. No. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that was good. I, I thought the I thought the image of when you said look around you where you're meeting the the nun and what it was like, and it was like with the pews around the wall is what yeah. I have read about. Mm. That the pews aren't in the middle of the church; they were only oh. round the walls. Okay, yeah, yeah, and that's where the phrase "the weakest go to the wall" came from. Ah, right. So it was yes, only the older yeah. people who had a seat to sit on round the edge of the church. Yeah. Everybody else was expected to stand. You know, yeah. <laughs> so it was like, yeah, that is mm. actually historically that's fairly accurate. Yeah. But I don't I have no idea about the location or whether. Yeah. Be interesting they, if you Google it. Well, I uh. don't think this is something you can. Yeah. I don't think that's what this is for. Yeah. It's not a detective story. It's, yeah. um, some people I like think, to do it that way. I some think this don't. is healing. Yeah. And it, I don't mind when you stop the recording, but I mm. remember one of your recordings. I think it, and it was a woman who, and you were going to her, and now let's go forward to your 60, 70. And I was sort of counting up, and I was thinking, my God, this, this person she's remembering is going to be living after she's been born at this yeah, rate. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. and I was sort of, it didn't, <laughs> se seemed a bit, yeah crazy you know yeah. so i think some of some of this is ourselves healing ourselves yeah because often as a hypnotherapist when that does happen and i see that it's going past i make sure i don't influence so i never go mm. to say and and now do you die somewhere because i'm thinking that I, well it wouldn't be the time I so i definitely just, didn't think you were influencing me no i never i, I never do i <laughs> felt that i really felt when you said let's go forward to um I think you 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 said go forward as far as sixty or something, and I, and there wasn't, and I knew there was nothing there. Yeah. I just kind of float in. There was yeah. just you know, and so then you took me back. I had a feeling, yeah, I didn't reach that age. Yeah. So yeah. that was, and you weren't you weren't guiding me for that. That yeah. was just. I said always know. make sure I don't. So even if it doesn't make sense, yeah. date wise, I just I just keep going with it to let the subconscious come. What well, is coming up? Gotta be honest. Paul, I wasn't expecting anything. Yeah, well, I'm glad you got something. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting anything, and I certainly wasn't expecting a kind of whole mm -hmm. picture building up. Of mm -hmm. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that, and no. um, and it was it was weird. It was like at every stage, I thought, "Now I'm not going to see anything else." It was like yeah. like when you said, that, uh, "Go to like um, the first place where you said you feel comfortable." Mm. Which is somewhere again that I I go regularly, and then the second place was another place I go regularly, and this that so that's easy. Mm. And then you said the corridor, and, and again I I envisaged a corridor which is something that was familiar to me. Yeah. So that was easy, mm. if you know what I mean. Mm. And at each stage, I thought, yeah, well, this is all there's going to be, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, much, I'm glad it went much further than that. Uh, yeah, that was amazing. Gosh. Thank you. Is there anything else you want to say on there? Anything about um, how people can find you as well? You know, if, if you decide that you're happy after seeing it go out on mine, it's... Yeah, yeah, you can. I mean, I'm happy if you wanted to cut any bits of our chat there. That's up yeah. to you. But yeah. Um, well, yeah, I mean, um, <laughs> I mean, this is in no way saying to people, oh, come and do this yourself. That's not yeah. what, I, <laughs> what I want to say. But, I'm, but I have said before on my own YouTube channel, there's nothing to be afraid of with hypnotism. Mm. It is for relaxation. It is to help you, and it is healing. And so yeah. I do. I do recommend hypnotism yeah. to people. So I mean, I would say if you're interested in this, I would say to definitely give Paul a shout and see. You oh, know, thank you. <laughs> see if you do it yourself. Yeah. Um. So. Um. Yeah. I my YouTube channel is Radical Cartoons, and the website is radicalcartoons.com, and I'm on. Get her, I'm not on Twitter. I perish the thought of being on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm on Getter and um, Spinster, which is feminist social media. So, you know, people can find me. And um, I, this has been a real experience for me. Mm. Thank you. I feel that it wasn't, it wasn't like a dream. Mm. Because dreams are just nonsense images. Yeah, yeah. Well, they might seem... Part of it might seem realistic, and then it drifts off into nonsense, you know. So this was not like a dream. Mm. It was not like a hallucination, um, which I have had, mm. because they tend to be quite quick and quite mm. momentary, and mm. or you know they're caused by something. Yeah. Um, this was a coherent thing that built up 
and <laughs> kept mm -hmm. kept being new. And I I don't know if it shows on the film, but I was actually looking around quite a lot mm. at the scene. And whether oh, I was, I whether my eyes were so. just whether yeah. I was just doing that with my eyes behind my clothes, but I was yeah. definitely doing a lot of looking around at yeah. the scenery and, and, and what was surrounding yeah. me. And you can't do that in a dream. No, yeah. You can't do that in a hallucination. Yeah. You can't. It's um. Unless you train yourself in lucid dreaming, I suppose, which I never have. So no. Don't I just, want to twice. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know what to make of that. I'm not. I'm not going to say to people, "Oh, yeah, this is true. This is great." But yeah. certainly, don't be afraid to try it. Yeah. Amazing. I mean, Thank I would you. like to write about that yeah. experience, actually, yeah. Paul. Yeah, no, please do if you if you. And I'll send it to you. And yeah, thank you. If you wanted to put it on a website, we'll yeah, most feel definitely. free, you know. Yeah, and and do send me a link so people can get hold of your book as well, so I can put that in on the description. Yeah, sure. Well, that's that's available on Amazon, my book. Yeah. So yeah, okay, oh, that's great. <laughs> put a screenshot of it up. Thank you.